Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Today I'm going to talk about robotic mowers. I have 11 of them now. Um, if you count the different modules, I think I have 12 or 13 actually. Total of my property, I've been testing nine of them extensively all summer long. I have not cut my grass around my house with my traditional zero turn lawnmower all summer. So this is a shorter video to give you a high level summary of what I've found so far this summer. I have a long like hour and a half video in more details, but this one I'm just gonna hit on uh, maybe if you just wanna understand a little bit more. So all of them other than one has a uh, flywheel with the razor blades. This is very common for the robotic mowers. And the reason I bring this up is it's important for you to understand because there are pros and cons to it. The pro is that they really can't damage a whole lot if they run over something because the little um, blades just tuck inside the flywheel. Uh, but it also means they don't have any lift. So they don't uh, pull up the grass to cut it. They're designed to maintain the grass height. So they're really designed to cut like, you know, a quarter inch or something off. So you run them every day or every day and a half um, or two days. Um, and that's how they're designed to run. They just always kind of be running around your yard. And so what that means is that um, you want to get one that's big enough that can do all of your area in one or two days max. So that's something important to note. You can see a couple of them are, I've sent them all back home because I had them all running out uh, cutting. Uh, so I wanted them to be here so I could show you um, them uh, all together here. So as far as which ones I have right now, uh, the white one coming in, this is a Man Motion Luba 2 all-wheel drive. This is their 10,000 x which is 10,000 i think it's 10,000 uh, square meters that it cuts so it can do just under three acres of um of uh area for cutting um and then i also have a 5,000 x which is a little bit of a small it's the same size unit man motion but it's just a smaller battery basically i think the the main thing with it um then i have a, a segway navi mo here this one's kind of cool because it has a big uh display um and then we have a uh, yarbo and this actually is the just, I mean, it's actually like beta test still. They sent it to me early. This is the Mower Pro module. Um, this is the standard M1 module that I've had all summer. That one has the flywheels. If I pick it up here and show it to you, this one has those flywheel discs underneath it. Um, this one has the widest cutting um, of any of these. It's about 20 inch cutting. The difference is on the Pro module, the motors are twice as powerful and then it has the option of running hard metal blades with lifting. So this one's all nasty because I actually sent it out into my off-road uh, track trails and cutting that grass, which is, uh, that's a different video, but that's awesome that I've been able to get it to cut that stuff. Um, so the other thing with this one, as you can see, this piece here, this is modular. So this is, they define it as like a, um, a yard machine. So you can take this off and put on a snowblower all winter long. I use this to snowblow um i can still blow like almost all of my driveway uh with the yard machine and then they also have a leaf blower i think they have other attachments planned for it it can also tow all right the the husvarna 440 iq i've had um uh, the previous one of these it works it is super slow uh though and it has one of the biggest drawbacks of all these mowers and that's that the flywheel is small relative to the width of the machine it's right in the middle so it does not cut anywhere close to the edge of the machine what this means is that if you're driving up against landscape edging or a building you're going to be whatever that is seven inches away um, that it's not going to be able to cut that grass no matter how you do it because it just doesn't have um, the spacing uh, needed there so that's that is a common drawback to a lot of these that you want to pay attention to this next white one over here this is a ecovax uh, goat a3000 more the the unique thing about this one is it does not use gps it uses lidar so this lidar is mapping your space so if you are in a place where you have lots of buildings around you tons of tree coverage these units with gps can run into problems where they lose signal uh, that one does not have that problem so that is a big win for it but quite frankly at the cost of this um, i thought it didn't really um feel as uh, stronger robust as the other ones that cost similar it does have the lidar technology but um you know to me the value wasn't quite there for it but it does work and it can do about 0.75 acres max the lidar ones the vision ones they tend to have limitation on the size not from just a cutting standpoint but a memory standpoint because it has to map that entire call it a world um, that it has to know to go into all right if i move here around the barn and had to go to a place with more plugs 
Um, I have two more units here. Uh, hilariously, uh, this one that's called the Works. This is a uh, Vision, it's a Landroid Vision XL. Um, despite the name or the brand of being Works, this one does not work. I mean, I literally tried over and over to get this guy to work and i just could not it has no gps no lidar has a single camera supposedly uses ai to map your space it could not figure out my yard i guess my yard is kind of complex you know goes the other side of that tennis court have all these different areas it could not figure it out um, even just this one area it couldn't figure out so absolutely don't recommend that one this next one here is the crest unit crest is a you know higher end uh, unit this one is almost fifteen thousand uh, dollars combined with their mapping trolley um, they do have much cheaper ones they have ones that are you know five and i think even under five grand they do a smaller space this one they advertise can do nine acres it has a lot of pros uh, to it it feels very well built it's been holding up very well if i look at wear and tear on like the tires and stuff it's been holding up well um, it does not require local rtk they use cellular base this is always has a cellular connection you do not even have to pay a monthly subscription for that um but it connects to that the problem is that it does lose cellular sometimes and then if it gets lost or stuck or something this one you can't drive it at all in the app um so the app has limitations you can't really set up um a lot of different settings that i like to do in the app it it tries to optimize everything itself which um if it works for you, then great. If it doesn't, um, you don't really have an option to fix it. And like I said, the big problem with me is that when it gets stuck or if it loses GPS in the woods and gets uh, stopped, I have to physically come to the machine and press these buttons to get it back going. You, it, there's no reset or anything. The other ones, I say they get stuck on something. Um, I can tell it, hey, you know, retry and it'll try to get back unstuck and uh, it'll get going. Or like Yarbo. I can fully drive it and it has cameras on all four sides and I can see it from anywhere in the world. I just need the internet on my phone and I can drive Yarbo around. Um, the Man Motion one, uh, you can only drive it on Bluetooth. I think it's the same for the Segway Navimo. So I think Yarbo is the only one I can actually view cameras and I can drive it uh, when I'm completely away from the machine, uh, which is huge for me. Otherwise, the Crest unit is good. It does have dealer network. Um, the dealer will actually come and map your space for you, which is both a pro and a con. The con is that you have to buy a $700 mapping trolley to do that yourself. So I bought it and then, you know, I needed it because I did make some changes to my yard or to the layout based off if it would act up or not. All right. And then the last one I have out here is a little tiny Eufy E18 and it is a small unit. What is funny about it is that if I were to look at it and flip it over, it actually has a cutting disc almost the same size as the Husqvarna one um, and it just has a smaller gap from the cutting disc to the side of the mower which means it can get closer to stuff but this one only has a uh, dual camera uh, setup here and it uses just the vision in order for it to do the learning Charging. Uh, the self mapping and the driving which is really cool because I literally set it up here say go it went and found all the perimeter by itself and you know, even the pine straw would say okay i'm not going to cut the pine straw and it mapped that and it cuts it the problem is even at its 0.3 acre max i can't get it to cut the 0.3 acres in one day it doesn't work at night it turns off at uh at sunset because it needs the vision so um especially in the shorter season you know the tell in the beginning i can't get it to even finish the 0.3 acres so if you have a small yard that could potentially work um, otherwise um, it just isn't fast enough or capable enough to, to do my complex setup all right so i cut 3.6 acres uh, in total and the only two that can do that is the yarbo and the crest unit uh, that's a kr236 crest i believe is the the model number um, so those are the only two units that can actually do that Yarbo is by far the fastest of these. Um, you can change a lot of settings. I, from an app standpoint, it's kind of a love-hate relationship a little bit with some of them. Um, my favorite ones are the Man Motion and the Yarbo because of the number of settings they, they give you. They're doing lots of updates, uh, giving you new features. Yarbo has the most um, configurations as type of cutting patterns that you wanna do. Parallel, diamond, cross, have it rotate. Um, every cut um, it has a spiral pattern um, it has adaptive where it will 
cut some this way and cut that way based on whatever is most um, efficient for it to cut. So I love that about it. Um, but there are sometimes bugs. What I have found with the more complex units is you're more likely to find a bug and they seem to be more sensitive to the internet at your house. If it's flaky or drops out, both the Yarbo and the Man Motion one do not like that uh, when that happens. Some of the other ones are not affected. The Segway, I really wanted to love it. It has both RTK, which is high precision GPS, as well as vision, and they claim, you know, AI capability on the vision and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the problem with it, it, it does avoid objects well, but the problem with it is that it seems to flake out if it loses either GPS or vision. So it's not almost not like a redundant system. It's like if either one fails, then it like stops working. So I've had like raindrops get on the side and says, hey, I can't I can't work because the um, the camera is wet. I'm like, well, but you have high precision GPS. Why can't you just keep cutting? So um, from that standpoint, I think, um, you know, I, I didn't like it. And then it seems to be slow, even though um, it has the complex um you know capability it seems on the slower side and then the other thing is it seems to be wearing out if i compare like its treads here uh compared to these other ones i really thought the luba one was going to wear these out pretty quickly because i do drive it like on the concrete half on the concrete half on the grass uh, but it's actually holding up pretty well otherwise other than getting dirty the yarbo one's been a beast uh, the only thing you got to watch out with the yarbo one is the antennas uh, can get knocked off these are actually the snow antennas so they're higher um, i could switch them out to the uh, summer ones which are lower but you still have to make sure you don't have a limb that will take those off because people do complain about breaking those on the husvarna one it's the smoothest one it doesn't get snagged on anything any branches can get over it uh just fine it has no cameras it has um you know it's very basic and it's really uh one of the fewest settings like you can't change the speed of it you can change the height of the cutting um, but that's about it. You just tell it to go. Now it does work. And for the most part, um, as long as it has GPS signal, it does lose it. Um, probably actually the easiest of all of them. Uh, but if it has GPS signal, then it just works. It's just super slow. It's probably two to three times slower than the other ones, uh, from a cutting uh, speed, from a combined, it drives slow as well as the, uh, single blade disc underneath it. So in the end, which one is my favorite? If you watch my long uh, video, you'll see it's Yarbo, and that was back on a month or more ago. It's still Yarbo. Um, I've gotten uh, updates. I've gotten the Pro Mower. The Pro Mower has definitely revolutionized um, the robots because now this can go and cut places where I could not send the robot mowers before. Um, so now I can send this wherever I send my big mower. So that's a game changer and then it does a better job of cutting the grass because of the lift so um you know even um when i'm trying to keep up with it with the uh, robot mowers there are times when it's missing some blades of grass because just the way that that they cut with the razor blades and um the pro module goes back up and cleans those up nicer and it puts down a nice uh stripe pattern so um it, uh, it to me it's like the clear one of the the downside to it and I'll, I'll go show that in the yard i guess is it can leave tracks in the yard because it's big and heavy that thing weighs i think 230 pounds when you add the core to the mower module it is not uh light and so the path that it takes to get from your charging station to the um to the yard if you don't have that where it can change it stays on the same exact path it will run uh, a little bit of lines in your grass and if your grass is sensitive i mean you can even kill uh the grass underneath those heavy tracks so um here you can see if you look to that uh tree off in the distance with the little gate around it these are two tracks now these aren't really big divots in the yard but because it ran this way a lot to i think it's actually when it's returning from cutting this area um it's just a little bit lower and the water settles there and so the grass gets a little bit greener um, and so you can see that now I can't fill it um, here, but it is there So now you can change that by having the route of The cutting pattern to rotate every time you go and cut and it will it will make it you know Change that return loop uh, every time you cut so that's how you fix it um, that I will um, You know help get rid of that that problem, but um, the other thing to note is I said before is the um the trimming along the edges obviously if you have concrete 
that's even. You can run the mowers half on the concrete and half on the grass. Like over here, my landscape edging is um, concrete curbing and I designed it and had it installed uh, specifically so I could drive a mower over it. But if you have the you know, landscape block that sticks up, obviously none of these mowers would be able to get all the way up to the end of it. Um, now Yarbo does have a trimmer attachment that I think is supposed to be out sometime soon. I haven't seen it, I haven't tested it, I don't know how that would work. But um, that is something that is coming out, otherwise you need something like this to allow these robot mowers to actually uh, cut all your grass without having to go around and trim it yourself. Okay, well, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. You know, I'll try to answer them. Like I said, I, I'm still using all of these machines um, out there just to get the testing and get more experience with them. Uh, so shoot me a, a comment down below. I will try to answer that. And if I need to make some more videos testing something, just let me know and uh, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. We will catch you next time.